Okay, 7 o'clock, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Do you have any comments from the floor? Nope. Okay, then we'll move right ahead to reports. And the first report is the student representative report, February Robert. Yes, yeah, so first off, February 14th, we had our Save a Life initiative, which came and showed a video about driving while under the effects of uh, alcohol and other distractions at the wheel. They also brought some simulations to simulate those effects, and they were texting where the kids would have to hold their phone while driving and shoot some text, and then they had the kids put on a VR headset to simulate kind of driving under the influence of what that would look like. And those simulations, that hands-on experience was definitely most effective, because these days it seems to be that texting is more of an a effect than it is drunk driving. So that texting simulation definitely showed them that you can't really drive in between the lines while you're texting at the same time. So were there any accidents? Oh yeah, they <laughs> went right into the building. Was, <laughs> nobody really kept it in between the lines. But we also had a few events. We had our <clears throat> we had our all county concert second. We had our art show twelfth, and also the music in our schools concert the twelfth. Also, we had the Mad City Money event. So the Broadview Federal Credit Union hosted it on the students were given an, in, an income of around 5000 per per month and they were married and had children with that income and they needed to budget that income for the month. So they needed to pay for things like food, clothing, housing, and then those extras, entertainment, that sort of thing. They also drew cards that were set around that would give them kind of unexpected events that would kind of help them or harm them, you know, if they went and had babysitter for a week and got paid 50 bucks, or if they had broken a tooth and don't have dental insurance, you know, they'd lose money or gain money. So the students definitely did enjoy the event and it helped them kind of teach them how to budget their money and effectively kind of save money for their future. And then finally, we had a uh, February survey that was based on different learning styles that the uh, students might enjoy. There were five options and the students had to choose their top three. Group work came out as the winner with 53 votes. Independent learning was second with 41. And direct instruction, the teacher giving notes to the whole class, was third with 36. Class instruction, kind of having a conversation, the teacher opens it up to the whole floor, was fourth with 33 votes. And projects or labs came in last with 31 votes. The students were also asked what lessons they have enjoyed so far this year and why they were their favorite seemed that most students enjoyed their global classes as they said it was fun and it was low on the direct instruction element and they also said the environment was great those two teachers really worked very well off of each other it shows the students did also note their math classes specifically geometry and algebra so yeah that's about it for this one any other questions besides mine <laughs> Okay, a couple of more. Yes. Can you give some examples of the group thing that came out first? Uh, what kind of group experiences are you guys having in high school? For the February survey, for the learning No, no, you know, well. where they, they, that was rated first. Group yeah. Group. yeah. And so what is the group experience? They kind of, if I can think of a uh, group project, there's a few that they do in global. They do a lot of projects more like, I know one that they really do like is they parcel the kids out in different areas and they have them go around, maybe they'll set up six different kids. One will have a presentation on Africa, one will have a presentation on something else. And they'll slowly rotate these groups. And that'll help them with their public speaking element because it's less kids instead of a whole class. It also keeps them to keep going. So you know, they're really bad at the first one, but by the end they've got confidence because they're much better at that end one. So those smaller groups help when they're working together and then at the end, they're able to give, you know, kind of constructive criticism so they're, as their kids are watching, they're on their computers and they're typing, you know, this student could have projected his voice more, he looked at his slides too much. So that group effort to kind of help and build up each other has really, really grows right at that ninth grade level with them. And it, you know, it's very helpful, especially with the topic like history that a lot of kids, you know, do struggle with like the test scores or just the general, you know, comprehension. Um. And thank you. And then the other question I had, which I was really surprised about how highly rated math was. Yeah, that Could one you really explain that one to me, please? That one really did surprise me. That's hard for me to speak on because geometry was the year we had COVID. 
it was online for me, so I didn't really get that. But algebra, I did with Mrs. Bell, and I can really, I can see it. She's very energetic in her way she teaches. She's not like the typical math teacher, so it really just, it, sometimes it comes down to the teacher, and she does do a, a few different projects that kind of do help, like she has one over the summer. She'll uh, teach the kids how to use a, a thing called Desmos, which is like a, basically just make graphs, and you kind of can make a, a picture, maybe a, a rubber duck, or I think one kid made a hockey player, and that kind of helps them learn the functions, but it's also kind of fun because they do present it, then they can give constructive criticism again as, and build each other up. So yeah, it's definitely, I think that one's definitely her as a teacher. She's definitely a great teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, next we have the superintendents. Uh, just like the piggyback that Robert said, that the music and art show, uh, I've never seen so much art. I mean, it was a ton. And it was, it was really, I, I thought, another step up, uh, especially from the elementary level. Um, but some of, some of the pieces were really outstanding. And one piece, you know, was represented in New York State. Uh, just did a great job. But there was just so, so many people here, which was another good thing, from ranging from elementary or through the high school. And, you know, you don't have to say too much about our concerts, but our concerts are great. And we held the all-county here. And I received some emails from people outside of our community who emailed me and said how impressed they were with the facilities, how clean, how welcoming it was, and stuff like that. I didn't in five years receive any of those. So it was kind of nice to, to, to hear that. The Mad City Money event I thought was a huge success. Opportunity for you know a company to come in and do something for our kids and stuff that we're talking about with, with fiscal responsibility. And what they're gonna do is put together a, a whole, uh, kind of like a 10 minute presentation and it's gonna be televised throughout the state uh, in April because I think it's Financial Literacy Month. So an opportunity for you know our, our district to be showcased um, and, and our kids. But the same token, they were extremely impressed with our students again our facilities and we'd like to come back next year and do it all again and that spectrums in, in on it too so uh, great opportunity and they were giving away free gift cards too correct we got some free gift cards twenty five dollars forty five twenty really yeah that, that's so win win all yeah. across there um, I had a building project meeting today just to give you a heads up on that um, we're still waiting for state ed state ed is eight months behind um, and so we're waiting for state ed. It should be next week that we get final approval and everything, and we'll start everything this summer, and it'll go through next summer, uh, just because of some of the things that we have to do with the students' current year. Uh, so it's just uh, it's just delayed at this point, uh, some of the stuff. And budget-wise, um, we'll go through some of that today, but the Senate Assembly passed their budgets, and then included the hold harmless language, and included a 3% increase for all schools so that's a huge positive for us obviously and hopefully that comes to fruition uh, the uh, the budget guru from NISCUS New York State Superintendent Association who's been around for 50 years with budgeting uh, seems to think they'll probably settle in around 2% but well, let's hope for the best uh, for, for the 3% at, the, at this point they also up the CTE salaries they also had in there um, the 35,000 for retirees and they um, also had uh, the biggest thing, I think, is the whole harmless piece uh, for, for the future. So um, it's, it's panning out as, as expected, I guess is the best way to say. So that's where we are right now. All set? Any questions? No? I just wanted to add one thing about the uh, money day, what do you call it again? Mad City Money? Mad City Money. Um, I was very impressed um, with the students how seriously they took this challenge, you know, and they, they were really, I mean, I, I was at the child care uh, table and they were really struggling with, you know, which decisions to make and which they could deal with. And, you know, and I, I just was really uh, happily surprised, you know, to just see how, how much they really got into it. And I know that uh, you were there as well and you had to say- I was selling cars, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know, some kids would buy the most expensive car and they'd get their spouse the bus pass. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but a lot of people were just choosing, you know, we're going to go with two used cars or one new and one used, which I thought was, that's great. That was perfect. Okay, so um, moving right along, we are off to the budget. Go 
through our budget stuff. <coughs> Lee, if you want to kind of first start off with the with the uh, debt service, you move to page four of the debt service one. I put it out of order in my fall. Page four where it says 1.3 million is highlighted. 1.4 million is highlighted. Maybe you can kind of talk yeah. a little bit about um, This sheet is our summary sheet of all okay. of our debt service payments. And then the other sheets that look like this sheet are all the um, different bonds that we have that make up the summary sheet. So our debt service for next year is the 1.3 million. But we're adding 400,000 to that um, because we're adding that additional um, to the building project that we're starting. That's on the proposition for the budget vote. So since we're adding to that, we're adding to the debt service as well. So the debt service is 1.7. Um, that's a decrease from prior years because we had some payments fall off. So since that went down, the aid on that is also down. So you'll see that on our big sheet, you'll see the changes from debt service and building aid. If you want to look at all the different ones that make up that amount, it's, it's there. Um, but that's basically, we use fiscal advisors for that and they give us the sheets and I keep track of it. That's what they um, are estimating for next year. That's kind of our forecast and we try to equal that out as much as possible and fiscal advisors takes a look at that every year to kind of give us their input to make sure that's about equal so there's no big gaps in your budget because one's a revenue one's an expense and if it's different it'll throw you off that other thing. Uh, the next one is special education and that's going down a little bit if you see page eight page eight page eight is our um, special ed budget right now it might change a little bit before we Thanks <laughs> um, it's basically the contractual, the supplies, and then the special ed tuition for outside placements. And that's basically where the increase is for the outside placements. And that's our, they're all state rates. We really have no control over that. Um, kids come and go, and then they're placed in those facilities. So um, if there's something that happens between now and when we finalize the budget, these numbers could change. And we try to put a little bit extra in there just in case we have families move in that need services. I mean, this number was about 620000 a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. That's the course of, of business. Uh, not to mention, if you remember last month, we looked at the transportation budget, and that went up also, and that had to do with the placements as well. But just as much as that can go up, it can go down too, because people could, well, it could. <laughs> But that, that is what it is, as we say. Uh, making sure we're educating every student, and that's part of the business. Uh, the next pages are the elementary school budgets. Elementary, pretty much the same. Nice job over there. Uh, middle school, pretty much the same as well. And high school, same thing. Uh, pretty much the same across the board. So we kind of kept things consistent. We're allowed to add to <laughs> Not really. Uh, so pretty much stays kind of consistent. There's two things at the bottom that we're looking to propose for this year. Due to the K-5 science labs uh, coming on this year, we'd like to add a K-5 uh, science department chair to kind of help facilitate that a little bit. And uh, second is some uh, new courses. Uh, that Nick got to, and Nick and, and, and uh, Chris got to throw in. We could have some more distance learning courses too, but they, we wouldn't know that yet. But there's the two new courses that they asked to, to add on this year. So we'll be looking to, for the most part, Nick took this on in his budget. So it's no additional cost. The only additional cost will be the, the K5 science chair. And again, with it, with it being so brand new, I would you know, probably be smart for us to make sure we have somebody to help oversee that as we move forward. And then the last page, uh, excuse me, the second one, the last page is our benefits. So Leah, if you want to kind of go over that a little bit. Can I just um, ask a question before we get to that? Yeah. Um, I, what, what is it going to be the nature of the science labs at the elementary school? What kind of they're, they're called science investigations. So there's four of them in grades three through five. 
and um, we can schedule them any time during the school year, and the students have to perform the four lab investigations by the time they leave fifth grade. So that person would just be overseeing like, um, the scoring, because we have to hand score the tests ourselves. Um, and we have to set up the, the investigations and ordering any materials that we might have, we might need. So um, it's a very helpful, that position would be very helpful for um, making sure that that goes smoothly, all of those investigations that we have to perform. So, yeah. Thank you. You're What's the cost of the position? I was just trying to find that. Uh, $1,200. Well, yeah. Is that? Normally, the yeah. amount for I didn't know what they yeah for the K the K five because we included the K fives a couple of years ago mm -hmm. yeah okay take it away Leah um, on the page eighteen of the nineteen pages um, <laughs> are the employee benefits and we don't have health insurance rates yet so we won't know what that number is going to be hopefully soon but. I put an 8% increase, so maybe it'll be less than that, but hopefully. Um, and then there's an increase for TRS expense, which is a teacher's retirement system that we pay every year. So that's up a little bit. And um, and those rates are set by the state. Your FICA taxes. And then we decrease the retirement instead of because um, that contract language has changed, so we shouldn't need as much in there. So right now it's up about three hundred thousand, but like I said, we don't have insurance. Rates yet, so hopefully soon, and hopefully we we keep the good string going. We had the last couple of years. So, and then the bottom piece is where our budget currently is now, um, and it really hasn't changed too much in the overall picture. What I mean by the picture, if you look at the top and the bottom, we talked about using ERS reserve and fund balance. Um, you can see those numbers are, are quite large down the bottom. And if we get that 3%, that minus 74,000 foundation aid, we'll switch over, you know, up over 300,000, which in turn will help us decrease the reserve and fund balance. Um, and Leah still has to fool around a little bit with the staff stuff in terms of where everything falls and also the health insurance. So if we get some good numbers there, plus 3%, we could probably close that gap. And I think what we talked about this year especially, you know, we have the fund balance and the reserves. Let's not panic. Let's use it. Let's see where the state's going to go. Let's see what the new foundation aid formula is going to look like in another year. And then let's make our plan from there. And hopefully we're in agreement with that kind of before. And that's where we are at this point, budget-wise. Uh, next one, we'll talk about revenues. The final one, we'll talk about putting together a final budget. And then the next meeting, we'll approve a final budget. Hopefully, by the third week of April, we have final numbers. So, by, by uh, New York State. Okay, any All questions, set? comments? No. Okay, thank you. Moving right along, um, we'll move to approvals. Um, I would ask for a motion for a consent agenda. I'll make a motion for a consent agenda. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We'll start with the minutes. Any questions there? Okay, going on to bills. Besides my questions, any other questions? No. Okay. Um, what I had is um, 64939, Amazon Cap Services. What is that about? It's just Amazon. Purchases from Amazon. Purchases from Amazon. Yeah, okay. my like supplies. I've seen a lot more of it because of prices. Yeah. Okay. Um, 64966, uh, Kayla Lachute. She's our um, physical therapist. I'm sorry? She's our physical therapist that we contract with. Oh, okay. I just didn't recognize the name. Thank you. And then uh, 65034, the village of Canajahari, $18,000. That's the school resource officer. Okay. That's like, I think that's two or three months of payments. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, no one else? So we'll move right along. Treasurer's report. Anything? 
budget transfers. Okay, tax cap calculation. One of the things that, that we were commenting on in the finance committee meeting is it's bizarre that the tax cap calculation does not include our foundation aid, mm. you know, which is a significant part of our budget. But, oh well. <laughs> One of the things also, I don't know, I don't remember if they mentioned it, but part of the two, two house package in the state right now is a million dollars for a finance a foundation aid uh, committee to reformulate and redo it. Hopefully, they'll come up with a, a more uh, up to date one. Because right now they're still using they census stop. data from the year 2000, mm -hmm. and um, and also one that is more meaningful and, and realistic. Okay, uh, a, a proposition on equipment reserve expenditures. Anything there? This is just starting to be our propositions that'll be on the budget vote. So remember, we approved the equipment reserve, but now we have to also, after the equipment reserve, we have to then get the voter approval for use of the equipment reserve. Okay, and then uh, capital improvement project extension. This is where we talked about taking the, the fund balance of $170,000 to get 1.5 million in addition because we're 93, 92% aid. So it's amazing to get that much money you know, mm -hmm. from the state with it. So if we get this approved, we can add the 1.5 million to the building project because one, over budget, just because of the, of the cost increases the last year and a half. Um, and two, we had to add a few more items because some of our heating systems are going into high school. So we have to add two more heating units at the high school. Okay, um, and we have the uh, student representative. That's the one in a couple of years. Annual proposition. Yeah. Yeah. Replace Robert. <laughs> we have to put that on a proposition every other year. Um, then we have the uh, budget hearing notice. Make sure to put that in your calendar. Um, community Youth Center summer transportation. This has been an ongoing thing. They use our buses. Okay. Just one thing to go back to the. Where was it? Uh, The additional building aid one. That was for the solar project to ask the approval for the extra 10%. Right? Uh, we approved the project. We're asking the voters to approve the 10% that we can get on aid. So that equates to about 250000 over 15 years that would go back to uh, the school. And remember, all this is we generate the, the energy, we get all the energy. Uh, so we're not parceling this out to anybody. And uh, we also get the, the tax benefit from, from all of it. So. And the, the, the entire solar project will be on school property. Right. So it's not going out into the community anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you said at Cobalt Skill Richmond, Central School District, anything new there? It's just a new student that joined us. Okay. And counseling center, same? That's for the, we needed an MOU for the therapist, the Office of Mental Health, in order to approve us as a site for a therapist, we needed to put an MOU in. Okay. The State of the Infinite Wisdom has been coming up with new things every three days, as opposed to just sending us a list of things on the beginning of this and saying, here's the eight things that we need. Jen gets things, gets two of them. Next three days, here's another no, thing. No, next three weeks, and then I get <laughs> more things. It's getting so very, so very frustrating, you yeah. know. Uh, so, anyway. Okay. Any questions on there? Okay. Uh, ratify real estate sale. Just That's finishing a $1,500 thing. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 Uh, continue to combine sports programs. No new change there, except OESJ adds the varsity football because the kids are moving up from modified football. Okay, good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then youth wrestling program. This is that we do every year, it's just improving it so we can do it. And uh, finally, uh, there's accept a donation from Stuart and Jessica uh, Friesen. Uh, they have a student who is in uh, autistic in our school. And, and they wanted to help support that, that program in the school and very generous contribution. And we thank them for it and it's really unexpected and appreciated. Sure. So thank you very much wherever you are.
<laughs> we're going to send out a thank you note, and we're also, when we purchase the equipment and supplies, we're going to have them come in and do a picture with them. Um, and um, Mark and I sent a letter today on behalf of the district. Thank you very much. I called them the other day, too, and Janice followed up, too. So very appreciative and very open to say anything else that you need. Said about $500,000. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I would ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And moving on to personnel, again, I would ask for a consent agenda. Consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, so our first is the resignation of Kenneth Van Lee. Any questions there? Okay, then we have Captain Nancy Boyer. Mm -hmm. um, any questions there? And, um, and we have uh, another, uh, Tracy Stetton is retiring. Any questions there? Well, one of the retirees and the, and the, um, and the tenured uh, at the April 2nd meeting. And, um, okay, and then we have appoint coaches. Um, nice to see they're all unpaid. Yes. <laughs> A lot of volunteers and for the most part, you know, uh, People been in our system or have played through here. You know, so. well, that's that's great to see that kind of uh, energy mm -hmm. and, and yep. enthusiasm. And then uh, a whole new thing would you know, appoint Dwayne Harris as head teacher. Any questions there? No. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve the personnel. Motion to approve personnel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Um, going on to old business, uh, BOCES Board of Education nominations election date. Um, that will be a special meeting on April 26th. Um, I think that we can do uh, a virtual meeting in the morning. Would that be? Yeah, okay. Does everybody have that scheduled? Yes. Yes. Good job. Just, just reaffirming it. Okay. And just remember, our next board meeting is the Wednesday, not Thursday. Because it's the, uh, the week of the break. So yeah. one is on what? March 27th. March 27th is that Wednesday, not Thursday. <coughs> March 27th. Remember, we're two, we're two for March, April, and May presentations, budget. And that's just the Wednesday only because, like I said, the Thursday, Friday's the break until Thursday before. And I didn't remember that, so I I am scheduled for a rabies clinic in Fulton County that night, so I will not be able to make it. So I apologize, but oh well. <laughs> um, okay, then moving right on to new business. Um, Just to let you know that we'll do the 6.30 on April 25th to honor the tenure staff and honor the, um, the retirees. And I will make a couple of cheesecakes. Yes. Um, Leah requested a lemon cheesecake. Is that agreeable? <laughs> yes. Okay. I didn't know we could put a request. He asked. Yeah. No, no, just because he asked. Yeah, I was there. So I'm like, Is there any other requests? Mm -hmm. I have one more cheesecake. I do yeah. like the apple. The apple would be delightful. The beggars can be cheesecake, so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's nice to cheesecake. We have an executive session. Okay, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Go home. Okay. Yeah.